Why do people mock God and think that there will be no consequences? Watch what Satan worshiper Marilyn Manson does to God's divine and perfect word. Why do people all around the world mock God's holy name and think that they'll get away with it? Why do people think it's okay to blaspheme our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? A lot of people come up here and they thank Jesus for this award. I want you to know that no one had less to do with this award than Jesus. <laughs> he didn't help me a bit. If it was up to him, Caesar Milan would be up here with that damn dog. So all I can say is, suck it, Jesus. This award is my God. What I want to do in this video is show you five people who took mocking God way too far. As each video progresses, the mocking gets more blasphemous and more egregious. Some have even paid dearly for it. Conor McGregor, one of the most iconic MMA fighters in the world, who amassed millions of dollars and won two world major UFC titles. In this interview, he is seen mocking Jesus. How would you and you versus Jesus in the octagon? How would that, how would he fare? Me versus Jesus in the octagon. <laughs> uh, Welcome to TMZ. Um, yeah, yeah. Now, uh, how would me versus Jesus in the octagon? I tell you what, there's not a man alive that can beat me. <laughs> but Jesus ain't alive, is he? So I don't know. Maybe he could come back from the dead. Not, I don't know. Um, I'd still whoop his Many years later, Conor McGregor would fight Dustin Poirier, where he would in a freak accident break his ankle, undoubtedly putting a stop to his career. You cannot mock God and get away with it. Lamar, a prominent rapper, had a custom diamond crown of thorns made by Tiffany that had over 8,000 diamonds in it. I wear this as a representation so you'll never forget one of the greatest prophets that ever walked the earth. They judge you, they judge Christ. He claims that he wears the crown to represent Jesus, who was one of the greatest prophets who ever lived, yet in the same breath creates music that is highly sexual, profane, and unholy. You boast in your crown to bring attention to your name, but Jesus, our Lord and Savior, wore a crown of thorns that pierced his skull for the forgiveness of our sins. Barack Obama, during his inauguration, swears by the word of God by putting his hand on the Bible, making an oath to lead the country in righteousness. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help you God. So help me God. Congratulations, Mr. President. <laughs> Yet mocks God's holy commands and the Bible. Which passages of scripture should guide our public policy? Should we go with uh, Leviticus, which uh, suggests slavery is okay, and that eating uh, shellfish is an abomination? Or we could go uh, with uh, Deuteronomy, which suggests stoning your child if he strays from the faith. Or should we just stick to the Sermon on the Mount, a passage that is so radical that it's doubtful that our own Defense Department would survive its application? Let me say something. You better be careful when you put your hand on God. You can say whatever you want to say, but when you touch the ark, when you place your hand on the throne of God, because God is enthroned in His Word, and you place your hand on the Word of God and pledge to do the very things that blaspheme His name, you talk about a high-risk action. Don't tell me that you advocate the slaughter of babies in the womb. Don't tell me you want to destroy masculinity, femininity, marriage. Don't tell me you want to fill the world with LGBTQ people in leadership. You want to justify transgender activity. Don't tell me you, you want to invite more Muslims in who represent a religion from hell and then put your hand on the throne of God. To swear by God's word and then to mock him is a terrifying place to be. Lil Nas, one of the most popular gay rappers in our day, continues to take mocking God's name way too far. In his latest video, Jay Christ, he is seen in heaven walking around in high heels, wearing promiscuous clothing, wearing a cross and using profanity. In another scene while playing basketball against Satan, Satan is wearing Nike shoes that Lil Nas did a collaboration with Nike 
Nike that has the sign of the devil 666, an inverted pentagram, which is a universal symbol of Satanism, and has the Bible verse Luke 10 18 on the side, which says, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven, which he is clearly promoting as a good thing. Most shockingly, he is seen crucified on a cross where he is mocking our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Little Nas has gained the whole world but forfeited his soul. One of the most darkest places you can be is when God shows his judgment to you by abandoning you over to your sinful and fleshly desires. Romans 1.24 says this, Therefore God gave them up to the lust of their hearts, to impurity, and to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves. Lastly, Pope Francis is at the top of this list. He is by far the most prominent religious figure in the world that continues to say that he is a man of God, yet says and does things that are directly contradictory to God's word. There are 1.4 billion Catholics that he is leading astray with his heretical teachings and false religious system. He is truly the definition of somebody who mocks God's holy name and is an antichrist. He blesses same-sex couples. He affirms transgender people and says that they should be baptized. He says that atheists and people of all religions are going to heaven and all people are children of God. La mayor parte de los habitantes del planeta se declaran creyentes. Esto debería provocar un diálogo entre las religiones. No debemos dejar de orar por él y colaborar con quienes piensan distinto. Confío en Buda. Creo en Dios. Creo en Jesucristo. Creo en Dios. Alá. Muchos piensan distinto, sienten distinto, buscan a Dios o encuentran a Dios de diversa manera. En esta multitud, en este abanico de religiones, hay una sola certeza que tenemos para todos. Todos somos hijos de Dios. He accepts the worship and idolatry of himself, of people who kiss his hand, bow down to him, call him Holy Father and Lord, which are divine names strictly designated for God in the Bible, and teaches the false heretical doctrine that he is infallible and he is the head of the church. Christ is the only Lord. Christ is head of the church. Christ's word is infallible and perfect, and only Christ is worthy of all praise and all worship. Watch what he calls Jesus. Jesus in this video. And his life, humanly speaking, ended in failure. The failure of the cross. Jesus' death on the cross was not a failure, but a glorious triumph over evil, death, and Satan for the forgiveness of sins. His death was a victory. His death was a conquering over Satan. His death set sinners free from God's holy wrath. Moreover, the Pope continues to promote that you can save yourself and that salvation is not found by grace alone. The Bible clearly teaches in Ephesians 2.9 that you are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, and it is not not of your own works so that no one can boast. God says in James 3 1, Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. Pope Francis, I would be terrified if I were you. Each day you are alive in mocking God's holy name. His infinite wrath and his infinite judgment is being stored up for you on judgment day. God's universal and spiritual law is those who mock him will face his judgment in one way or another. God God can bring judgment to the mocker by abandoning him over to his sinful desires. God can bring calamity in the form of loss, injury, or even death. But the most terrifying judgment for those who mock God are those who do not repent of their sins and will one day face God's holy wrath for all eternity. And there will be not an ounce of mercy or grace. We must tell men that God all day long extends out His hand to a disobedient, obstinate people, but at the same time, the wrath of God comes upon the world. 
that the wrath of God will come in such a way that men will cry out, the great captains and leaders of this world will cry out that the rocks fall upon them to hide them from the wrath of the Lamb. You will rarely see people mocking Islam, Buddhists, Hindus, or Judaism. So why the God of our Bible? Why is Christianity the number one most mocked religion in the world? This is why, at the heart of the Gospel, Jesus Christ, who's being mocked, tortured, and crucified on the cross, says to his enemies, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. He shows compassion. He prays for his enemies. He's extending grace. Brothers and sisters, at the heart of our faith, Jesus calls us to love our enemies. He calls us to pray for those who persecute us, to give our enemies food and drink, to forgive those who wrong us, to be peacekeepers, to not pay back evil for evil, but to give back in kindness and grace. We are an easy target for our culture and world because we will not pay back with evil. In the end, God will be the final judge and is sovereign over all things. The truth is, we have all mocked God. We were all his enemies at one point. We all fell short of his glory. But as a free gift, he sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to pay the penalty for our sins so that we can be forgiven and justified. And now as Christians, we extend the same grace and kindness to other people. What is the only salvation for those who mock God? What is the only way out of hell into the ever lasting arms of God? It is the saving gospel of Jesus Christ. Acts 4.12 says this, And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no under name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Every sin that you and I have ever committed is written on this certificate of debt. It once was posted upon the prison cell of sin in which we lived in. We were under the wrath of God. The sentence of death had already been declared upon us. The stench of death was in our dying soul and Jesus upon Calvary's cross he took that certificate of debt and it was nailed to the cross and there all of our sins and all of our iniquities and all of our transgressions were nailed to Calvary's cross and him who knew no sin God made to be sin for us. And upon that cross, as He shed His blood in our place, He paid in full the entirety of our sin debt. And if the Son shall set you free, you shall be free indeed. That is what Jesus did upon the cross for us. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe for more content and share this video with as many people as you can so that we can get the truth of God out there to more people. To God alone be the glory. God bless. Thank you.